adventure or my introduction to artificial intelligence was, I mean, I have been in the industry, I do software programming, I have seen software and we, we have seen artificial intelligence in play. But it, it was in my face when I tried something as simple as calling Siri or asking Siri, they have seen call my what? Okay? And it, it asked, which one? <laughs> okay, so, so I had numbers of wife, so Siri called wife, wife USA, wife Dubai, and wife New Zealand. And my wife was sitting next to me. Not next to me, my family was sitting next to me, my kids. My wife is what I wanted to call. And I was, wow. <laughs> How come I get so many lives? The, the point was, whenever we go to a new city or new, new country, we take a new SIM, and I say, used to save the numbers and buy to the same. But I never deleted it from my contact book. And this is what you know, uh, came into my face. Any which way, so, so jokes apart, we are trying to understand what artificial intelligence is and why it is of so much uh, why it is being read so much in media? Why? What is the fun of it? What is the need of it? And uh, is it going to affect us? Does artificial intelligence affect us? So I, I whenever we, nowadays, whenever we go and travel with family, I ask my daughter, who is in 11th grade, to start booking for us. And then she will go and search for that city, figure out what are the places to see, and what are the hotels to book. And you know, she comes to me the next day says, Papa, you know, I started searching for let's say Dubai, and all of a sudden my Facebook or my Instagram starts showing me hotels from that place. How could they know that I was still there? Okay? So that is what artificial intelligence is happening all around. It is reading your activities, it is capturing your inputs, and it is it is knowing your footprint wherever you are going and it's trying to push those advertisements on there. So this is one simple example. In Gmail, your emails are sorted. All of those spams that James was talking about are now doesn't really bother you. It goes into spam once for all. So Google cannot filter all of your emails that are down there, right? So they've created a very smart program which filters 99.9% .9 emails out of your inbox into spam box and it removes it automatically. Okay? So it, it organizes your emails before it comes to your inbox into your important emails, into your promotional emails, into your social media emails, into your forums and spam. So this is all artificial intelligence. Google starts to, Gmail starts to give you auto responses because it understands what is there in the email. When I have a ticket booked for a flight I am going to put it tomorrow, it will remind me, Google will remind me or Gmail will remind me that you have your flight tomorrow. I never told you Gmail or Google about my flight. It is sitting in my inbox and therefore it knows it. So this is all artificial intelligence happening in action too. Now the question is why all of a sudden we are talking about artificial intelligence. The, the term was coined in 1955 by John McCarthy. Why, why so much of noise now after 60 years? 65 years right? Don't you don't you think that the computer or the calculator that we used to have in our school days uh, is, is an artificial intelligence itself? The answer is no, a calculator is not an artificial intelligence tool. It was a simple intelligence tool. The magic with artificial intelligence is that it starts to think, learn, and act like you, when machine starts to learn 
and, and think and act like humans, that is where the magic happens. Now, and then, and then add the, the mix with the capability of scale. The human brain is only this much. But if I combine the computing power behind this, then the magic starts to unravel. Right? So, and then include the, the ability to, to, to connect so many such knowledge bases or artificial intelligence together. Okay? So, now start to think of this as you, all of you use Google Maps. How could you forget Google Maps? Google Maps, yes. very simple story, you know, and I'll tell you why it is so powerful now. So I've been grown and brought up, brought, brought up and in love and right from my childhood to school days to so I've read it all kinds of vehicles on indoor roads. So I could assume that I could have been in love, every road in Come Google Maps. You know, so uh, my parents live in uh, air, around the airport road. I live around the uh, distance Square. And we were the family of four. We were going from my parents' house to my house. And there are at least five, six roads that leads to the same place. So, you know, I usually take one path. And this time I said, okay, let's, let's go from this particular uh, road. My daughter was sitting next to me in the car. She said, that's dad, 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 let's do the Google Maps. And she said, you know, this is the shorter route. And let's, Google says it's going to take this time. I said, no, 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 I don't do this one. Because I find this is better. With less thickness, less traffic. And there were some red signs which Google was showing on its map. I, I defined Google, I said, no, it doesn't understand. And uh, they took the path. Okay, my wife and my son were also in the car. Now, as Google God has already figured out, the uh, road was jammed. And we spent like five, ten minutes more as opposed to or it took it should take. By the end of the journey, my daughter was confirmed that Google Maps is the best. I was in my self-doubt whether I had enough understanding of roads and nothing now. My son, who is like in sixth grade, he got his lesson for life. Google Map is the best thing. And my wife you know, always believed that I don't know anything. So that way, it was, everything was settled. But the lesson that I'm trying to tell you here is that all of us now would never trust our judgment on roads. They will all go by Google Maps. And, and it works so beautifully that any part of the world, you use the same app and you reach from point A to point B. Now, I'm not saying Google Map is bad. What I can tell you is, this will move us away from our own thinking, which is it is definitely limited, no, no doubt, no doubt about it. Google Maps is much more powerful, much more capable, much more informed system. And the beauty is, it is learning on its own. I was in LA last month, and we were wondering why Google is not taking us to the main road, why it is taking us inside. And we were seeing in the rear view mirror of my car, like, you know, Few more cars are following us. Google was doing traffic management instantaneously on the roads of Los Angeles. No, no traffic cops can do that. No traffic management system can do that. This is the power of Google. But the, 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 the power of artificial intelligence because it is not doing, only giving signals to us on Google Maps. It is also reading the signals back. It is, Figuring out that whatever Google is giving you as a direction, are people really following it and are they getting benefited or not? 
So, so Google has the ability to divert traffic real time to make the roads less congested and make it easy for us. If, 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 we, if Google starts to read the signals back, then you know, we are all stuck in the same path and stop diverting traffic to the We start diverting to some other road. This is the magic of artificial intelligence where no human involvement is there. I mean, human involvement is just in that they end up giving signals or accepting signals. But the data that is coming and the analysis that is happening is right at the machine level. There is no human intelligence involved at that point in time. This learning on its own and improving from there. So this is what artificial intelligence is brought to the table. Now why it did not happen 30 years ago or 20 years ago? So there are many more reasons behind that. The, the, the biggest reason is that today, and, and, and thanks to Didi for a very good talk on the mind management. What scientists are discovering, their research advances in life sciences, the research advances in human social sciences and humanities. And what they are figuring out is that as a profession, or a software programmer, or a doctor, or a lawyer, all the expertise that we gain, if we call this professional intuition, is nothing but a pattern recognition. Is nothing but some set of instructions, some set of data analysis that has happened based on the, my own past experiences in life. Okay, so all of this is distilling to a set of instructions. And we have, when we add billions of computers around it with the computing power, which is unmatchable, we can break through all of those. And that is where, so that is where the human artificial intelligence is getting a lot of traction, a lot of focus. And everybody is focusing on that as a technology of the future. Artificial intelligence includes um, multiple things. I don't want to go into a lot of details here. Everything is available. You can Google everything on the, on the uh, internet. But essentially, machine learning is another term that you get. So I talked about the capability of machines to learn, analyze, and act. Right? So machine learning is one part with just the learning, which is the uh, collecting data, sensing, a lot of sensors are there, which reads those data. Then a lot of computing power is there, which analyzes it, uh, applying big data principles, applying uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, slicing and dicing of data. And then they, they distill through all the information, understand the human. Uh, responses that are needed, then try to transform it into a set of human actions, which is where the, uh, the three major stages of uh, artificial intelligence is. I'll uh, give you another story of, please do a time check. Uh, so, I'll tell you another story. Uh, you know, a few years back, we we learned that humans could, uh, could defeat computers in the game of chess. Chess is a symbolic uh, platform for human intelligence where we believe that if humans can defeat computers in the game of chess, they are still superior. Gone are those days, uh, the, 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 the uh, chess champion, the world champion in chess is a computer. And very interesting fact that has happened very recently is uh, there was there was a, an application created by Google, an artificial intelligence application created by Google. It was uh, uh, which defeated the computer champion, and the ability of that computer was to identify 
80 million positions per second. And this artificial intelligence application could identify only 70,000 move positions per second. Interestingly, this application was not given any input from human and it was put on the chess board to learn what is chess, what is the game of chess. So without any input, this particular application defeated the sitting champion, the computer, which was a computer, which has 80 million moves per second. The artificial intelligence application defeated the computer in 100 games. The score was 28 games in one. It, it tied 72 games and lost zero. The, the two important things to understand here is there was no human input given to this app. Okay? And it learned chess in the matter of four hours. Can you imagine that? It learned chess in the matter of four hours without any input and defeated the second world champion, which is not a human, which is a brilliant super computer. Because it is learning on its own, it would create moves that no human can imagine. It is beyond human creativity to imagine those moves. And that is where the power of artificial intelligence is on our display. How many of you know driverless cars? You know Tesla running on the road in the US is fully capable of running without the driver. They are just waiting for the US regulations to come in action and uh, just initiate it and it will you know, run without it. Uh, one last input that I want to give and leave the stage. There is a, how many of you know there is a, there is a mythical story on Samudra Bantam. There was Dev on one side and Asura on one side. And they, there was Sheshna which was used. And then there was a mountain which was used to churn the ocean. Do you know that? Yes. yes? So there came one valuable uh, outcome which was called as Kalpavaj. Kalpavaj, so now I have to have Kalpavaj is a tree and sitting under which you can imagine anything it can have to be. Okay? Artificial intelligence is that Kalpavaj. You imagine eating a pizza and you will get it at your home. You imagine buying iPhone 11 and it is at your doorstep tomorrow morning. Right? Is it not happening already? Uber Eats? Amazon Prime? Right? And and one more interesting thing, with the advances in medical sciences, it is very soon possible to stay alive for more than 100 years without getting old, without getting wrinkles on the face. So this gun crush is unimaginable. All you have to do is just, you know, ignite your imagination, think what all you want, and you know, call for it and it will happen to you. Thank you very much.